Hey guys, it's Agonis Tillman again and welcome back to my channel. So first of all, thank you again for joining the channel. I really appreciate your time. I also wanted to ask you, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, to please do so by just clicking on the button below and hitting subscribe because it's really gonna help me in bringing you a lot more videos. Today I'm pretty excited because I'm gonna do another video on Magic Leap. I'm going to be basically showing you an example that I've been working on and how I went and added basically what's called the fit type and how we can use the fit type to determine if we can fit a specific structure, an object, or something within an area where we have an ML spatial mapper designated. So let's jump into Unity and I start working on it. All right, guys, so let me show you what I have right now, which is the scene that I created for the experience of procedural buildings with Magic Leap. So I've been making a lot of changes to this and some of the things that I wanted to do is I wanted to hide the canvas by hitting the home tab. Let me just go ahead and hide the gizmo so you can see. So if I hit the home tab, basically button on the controller, which is this one right here, it's going to toggle whether I wanna see the canvas or not. And then the other thing that I also added was the ability to see the fit state. I can also control, if I go in and hit play, I can also control the toggle. Let me go ahead and mute the audio because it's pretty loud. And then I'm just gonna put it, put this on the side. So let's say that I generate a procedural building by just pressing the letter X, which is what's happening right now, I can generate. But then a lot of times the canvas is gonna be on the way and it's gonna be really hard to see the structures. And what I ended up doing is I'm also binding to the space key on the keyboard so I can do, you know, do a toggle. And in fact, if I go ahead and, and get closer, you can see by hitting the, F, the space key, I can toggle between, you know, showing and not showing. And then that way I can, you know, I can concentrate on the experience that I'm building and not too much on the canvas. The canvas is cool because I now added the, the fit state. So if I want to see, let's say that I've, I'm, I'm using the controller right now. And if I generating what's called uh, the spatial mapper of the area, which is basically meshing everything around me. And if I want to place a building in an area where I can't really place it because it doesn't fit, now the fit state it's gonna tell me that. And there are multiple states that I can I can see at any time. There's one that is unknown, there's one that is fit, one that is basically, so, so there's a couple that I can, I'm gonna show you that in the code, but I'm capturing those states and then basically sending that information to, to the canvas so that I can display it to, actually to myself when I'm doing the experience or anybody that is trying the experience. So what I'm gonna show you is some of the code changes that I had to make. So now what I did is on the head post canvas, I have a binding and this one is responsible for basically binding the UI components. I have a text box, box which is going to be the, the fit state. And if you go in it, that's basically that label right now. Let me just click on 2D so you can see it. And the way that I have it right now is I have basically a fit state, I have a column, and then based on the state, I'm setting the color. And this is something that Unity added. So if you use that tag, it's basically gonna set that tag to be that color. So if I change it to green, it'll change it to green and so on. So I'm starting with unknown because that's a state that I don't know. I don't know what's gonna be at the beginning. So that's gonna be the default. And then if we go back to the canvas, I have this UI binding. So if I double click on it and open it up, I can show you what it has. So. One of the things that I had to do is I, I didn't want to disable the entire canvas. I wanted it to be there, but I didn't want it to be, you know, to cast problems if I don't have it. Let's say another component tries to access one of these. I don't want it to blow up. So what I did is I ended up just adding a canvas group. And the cool thing about adding a canvas group and I'm losing my voice <laughs> is I can change the, basically the alpha. I can also, you know, tell it whether I want to block a ray cast or if I want to ignore parent groups. So the cool thing with this is I didn't have to actually disable the canvas completely because I wanted the canvas to be there. I just didn't I just didn't want it to be visible. So I'm basically using the alpha value. And basically when I'm hiding it, I'm setting it to zero. When I'm showing it, I'm setting it to one. So I have I have a reference to the fit state text. The reason why I have this is because I also want to update that. And this is the one that is responsible for updating whether you know, something fit, or if it doesn't fit, or it's a different state, then this is what I do. I provide a public method that somebody else or another another class can call to set the text. The other thing that I do is I also get the canvas group because that's the one that I'm gonna use to toggle whether I show or not show. 
and then this one was I had to do it this way because the controller icon is a sprite so I'm basically just exposing a serialized field and that serialized field gets bound to this and then what I'm doing when I call the toggle if it's set to one I basically do the opposite and then I also hide the controller icon otherwise I set it all back to default which is going to be one on the alpha and also true by sh which means that I'm going to show the sprite so that's basically this piece the other piece if I show you the placement controller this one is the one that you know I told you that I can I can place basically objects around my area as long as I have a mapping basically a mesh of the area and some of the things that I, I wanted to do here is I wanted to toggle the canvas so I didn't need to modify or create a new handler because I already had a handler a handle on bound down and what I had to do is just added a new if statement and I'm basically looking for the home tab if somebody presses the home tab on the controller I basically toggle the canvas and then if I press it again and then let's say that it's set to false right now and it's not showing then it's gonna get set to true the next time around so this is just a, a very basic toggle the the other thing that I wanted to show you as well was the different states of the fit so I I was thinking about doing you know more of an overlay but the procedural buildings can change size and I just didn't want to spend too much time on it so instead I just used the canvas to display the state of the placement so the actual placement so this object right here it's going to have a placement component associated so if you look at the placement and we do a fit you're gonna see that it's going to be a fit type and fit type is going to be basically an enum so which I have right here so if we look at that enum, let me go ahead and delete this. If we look at that enum and we can look at and pick the definition, you're gonna see that it has different states. So it could be that the the current fit it's gonna be unknown, meaning that we don't know if we can fit you know an object in that in a specific area, or if we fit, that means that we have enough space to fit an object. If there's no surface, that means that there's nothing to be basically, you know, there's no there's nothing where you can place that object on. And uneven, you know, kind of described by the by what it is, overhang, volume intersection, run orientation. So these are just some different states that you can get back from your placement object. So what I wanted to do is these are the ones that I wanted to capture and change the color. So what I'm doing is I'm saying, okay, tell me what the fit state is of this placement object. And then if it's fitting, I'm gonna set it to green. And I'm also getting basically the, the value. So when it fits, it's gonna give me fit, and then I'm gonna change it to, to a string. And I'm also doing a two upper because I want it to be consistent with my basically the font style that I wanted to that I wanted to have. And then if it's uneven, I'm basically just, you know showing the color orange, and then I'm doing exactly what I'm doing here. And then if it's oh it looks like I did uneven and uneven, which that's not what I meant. Let's do no surface on this one if, it, if there's no surface I'm gonna do yellow color if it's uneven I'm going to do orange if it's fit I'm gonna do green and then anything else is gonna fall on the red which means that you know we, it's unknown or it doesn't it can't really fit in that area so that's basically what I do and then I'm calling the UI bind, binding instance and then fit stay so the next thing that I want to show you is actually showing you this and actually how how it looks when I run it on the device so let me let me find that video which I put I just downloaded it so I'm just gonna go ahead and open that folder and then show you the latest download that I have which is today it's gonna be really loud but I'm gonna let me just go ahead and just mute it for just or maybe just have it on and then so, So I'm just gonna fast forward a little bit so you can see. So right now I'm just looking around and then looking at the fit state to see what the values are. Just fast forward a little bit, I think right about here. This part is really cool and I wanted to basically pause it because I'm actually inside of the building. So I'm going inside and then I'm basically getting out of the building. And I'm just gonna keep fast forwarding because at this point I'm basically going up the stairs 
and I'm just basically toggling the the generator. And I think that's that's basically about it. And honestly, that's basically everything that I wanted to show you guys. And I'll be showing you more about this experience in the coming weeks. Thank you guys. All right, guys, thank you much for watching this video. I really appreciate your time. And if you have any questions about what I just showed you, please let me know in the comments. Also, be sure to check out GameDev.net because they have amazing resources for game developers. And also find me in Patreon.com where I'm basically posting information about what I'm doing behind the scenes and also early access to source code. Thank you very much, guys.